Hello. So, in this example, I have a nice word problem here. Hooray! <laughs> so, this is a related rates problem. So, we have a ball, and for general simplicity, <laughs> we're going to assume that it basically stays a perfect sphere while it's being inflated at a certain rate. And so we know um, that the radius itself is increasing at this steady rate, right? Three units per second, whatever those units are. Then we want to know, okay, what rate is the volume changing when the radius is actually at 12, okay? So first step, any word problem, um, including rate of related rates, is to do your best <laughs> of drawing a picture, right? I'm the artist, so you'll have to excuse me. Um, so we have some sort of spherical sort of ball thing going on here. Um, yeah, it looks terrible, whatever. So, <clears throat> sorry, it's gonna bug me if I don't fix it. Let me redo that. <clears throat> this is one of those uh, downsides to caring about making things look decent, whatever. So we have some sphere thing. I didn't make it any better, but that's fine. I'm not an artist. Have some sphere thing. It's it's uh, getting bigger and bigger. So in particular, I have some radius r, and it has some volume v. Uh, there's some surface area too, but I guess that doesn't come up in this context, so I'm not going to worry about that yet. Maybe we have to worry about it, um, but we'll sort of keep it on the back burner. <clears throat> now, I want to know something about the volume of this thing, given a change in a radius. So if my radius is r, then it tells me, okay, the radius is increasing at the rate of three units per second. So that means that my dr dt, my change in radius over time, is three units per second. And it wants to know uh, what is the volume increasing to with respect to time at uh, when the radius is 12 units large. So, um, it's asking me for the change in volume with respect to time. So I guess what I need is something that relates volume, because that's what I want, r, which is what I have information on, and eventually I'm going to take a derivative with respect to time. Well, the only thing I can think of that relates a volume and the radius is the function, the, the equation for the volume of a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed, okay? So I have my v here, and this is my sort of primary function or whatever you want to call it, my, my uh, modeling um, equation that I'm going to use. I want to generate dv dt, so I'm going to take this and take a derivative with respect to t. So that's going to get me dv dt on the left, right, taking a derivative with respect to t. 4 thirds and pi are both constant, so they don't get affected by the derivative. But then I'm going to have the derivative of r cubed with respect to t. So I'm going to have 3 r 3 minus 1. That's just treating it like a you know, regular polynomial term. But then the chain rule says that I have to multiply by that dr dt. Now notice, even though it told me right that the, the radius is 12 units when I, when I want to do it, I'm not using any of that information yet, and that's actually important, because if I had plugged in a 12 here and taken a derivative, all of this would have been constant, and my, my dv dt would have been zero, which means it's never gaining volume, which is a little weird for something inflating, right? <laughs> so I want to make sure not to plug in any information until after I've taken my derivative step. So now I can clean this up a little. dv dt. So 4 thirds pi times 3, so the 3's cancel, so that's going to get me just 4 pi here, r squared. And then here, I still have my dr dt. Now is when I want to try to plug stuff in, right? So now I want my dv dt. This, this is what I'm trying to get. So my dv dt is what I'm trying to solve. 4th pi is just going to stay that. R. Do I know R? Well, it did tell me, right, R is 12 units. So I know what R is. That's 12. This is when I'm plugging stuff in. And then dr dt, do I know that? Well, that's what it was telling me at the beginning, right? It's increasing the rate of 3 units per second. 
So I have three units per second. So then I have everything I need right here, right? So that's three times four is 12 times 12 squared. So that's really 12 cubed. So that's 144 times 12 is 1440 plus 288. Oh gosh, that's uh, what, 17, 20, oh my brain, eight. That doesn't sound right. So 144 times 12. So that's gonna be, this is where I need scratch work, 1440. Uh, so that's the 10 plus two, so that's 288. So that's uh, 17, hey, I was right, 1728. I should have trusted myself, 1728 pi. And to be clear, this is units per second. Okay, and that's it. So a lot of the hard part about um, related rates problems is coming up with the right equation and even though it sort of wasn't too bad in this case, when, you might notice when I was looking at it, I was like, okay, I need stuff about V, I have stuff about R, what do I know that relates those two things? And I came up with something. That's really the technique you wanna to use to get this equation, is you look at what you have, what you're given, what you need, and try to relate those two variables in some way. Maybe it involves other variables, which you might have to find out later, but at least it sort of gives you a link to work from, okay? So that's that. Hello, so in this example, another word problem, hooray, hooray. <laughs> so this is another optimization, uh, another related rates problem, excuse me. So we have a baseball diamond. So I'm gonna start by making a picture, right? So uh, let's see, so we have sort of baseball diamond here. Okay, um, so this is home, first, second, third. Okay, now uh, it tells us, okay, it's 90 feet on a side. So 90 feet, um, and this is a perfect square, so all of them are 90 feet. And um, we have the batter, hits the ball, runs toward first with some certain speed, uh, so Let's call that S, so that tells me that DS, DT, the speed of the runner, is 15 feet per second, okay? And um, we wanna know, so the runner is running along, so he stops, they stop somewhere, right? So they're sort of happily going along. Rah. And we wanna know, I guess, the distance to second base, how that is changing. So let's call that distance D. Um, and this distance is also changing, right? So looking at this, distance to second is changing as the person runs. Um, the distance to first is also changing as the person runs. So maybe I'll call that, uh, I don't know, let's call that A, why not? So A is sort of the remaining distance to first. And this thing is a square, so that's a nice right angle. That might be helpful. Okay, um, so the speed is 15 feet per second. They want to know how fast this is closing. All right, so let's see what we can figure out here. I need some way of relating uh, this distance and that distance because I can figure out stuff about how that's changing and I know stuff about how that's changing or I, I want to know stuff about how that's changing. But this is a right triangle, right? So this thing, if I say, okay, this is, uh, let's call this B, then I know that uh, A squared plus B squared equals D squared, right? <clears throat> Now, I, I guess I, I jumped ahead of myself because I don't necessarily want to call this ds dt. I'm just going to say that the running rate I'm going to record. Oof, that looks like a horror movie. Let's try that again. The running rate is 15 feet per second. I will interpret that in a way that is helpful, hopefully, later. So this is a squared plus b squared uh, equals equals. Uh, d squared. 
Now I need a way of looking at how this changes. So I'm really going to need to do a derivative with respect to time of this thing, right? So if I do that, then my, t my a squared becomes 2a, but then chain rule, right? Because dt, the t and a are not the same. I'm going to get that this is dA dt. Same deal here, 2b times db dt equals, and I guess d was a bad choice here because I'm going to write 2d times dd dt. <laughs> um, so maybe I'll, in this instance, I'm going to write this as just d square, uh, d prime to make it a little bit uh, less confusing looking. Um, all right, so then what do I have? Well, db dt, that length is not changing, right? Like as the person runs along this length, this length is always staying the same. So db dt, right, that these are all things I need to know. So I, I'm, I want, so I want to solve for d prime. That's what I'm after, right? How does that change? So I need a, a prime, b, b prime, and d. These are all things that I need to figure out. Right? At the time that I'm interested in. Because again, I could have plugged in some stuff because I have numbers floating around, but I don't ever want to plug in anything that I can avoid plugging in until I've taken the derivative. So now that I've taken the derivative, now I can go through this. Okay? All right. So I know that um, the person is a third of the way to first base. So a third of 90, so there's 30 feet behind him, and there is uh, 60 feet in front of them. So that means A, at the point I'm interested in, is 60 feet. I'm going to skip A prime for a second. B, well, that doesn't change, right? So it's 90 feet no matter what. But importantly, it doesn't change. So the change of time and change with respect to time is zero. It's staying the same the whole time. D does change. That's what I want. But D itself, I can calculate by using the same thing at the point that I know, right? So in particular, right, if I square root both sides, this is the square root of uh, A squared plus B squared at the point I'm interested in. So this is really the square root of 60 squared plus 90 squared, right? Um, so let's do some math magic here. So this is the square root of uh, so this is 6 times 10 squared, so I'm going to write this as 100 times 6 uh, squared plus 9 squared. So I basically factored out the 10 squared from both of them, which is 10 root of 36 and 81. So that's, uh, what, 1, uh, 1, 7, 1, 7, 1, 7, whatever that is, <laughs> some awful number. Um, so, I mean, it is what it is, doesn't matter. Uh, I guess I can pull out a three squared from both of those, so I could pull out a nine. Uh, so that's gonna be 30 root, uh, that's gonna be one, three, root 13. Okay, so my D at the time of interest is 30 times root 13, and I got that by just looking at this um, Pythagorean triangle, right, doing the Pythagorean theorem to solve for D at the actual time, right, when A was 60, when he was, when the person was 30 feet along that run. Now A prime is the change in A. So the change in A, right, is 15 feet per second, but I have to be careful because this amount, this value is shrinking by 15 feet per second. So the actual change in A, because of the way I've labeled it, is negative 15 uh, feet per second. Because the, the change in A is, A is getting smaller over time, right? The distance to first is getting smaller as it goes. So then, if I take this whole thing <laughs> and plug in what I know, let's do it over here. I have 2 times A, so 2 times 60, dA dt which is minus 15 
feet per second, plus 2 times b, b is 30 root 13, times, well, db dt, but that's 0. So I did this sort of on purpose, but if you notice, if I had noticed that originally, I didn't actually need b. Right? I didn't have to go through this because b prime being 0 killed it off, and I, I don't care anymore. Right? So the, um, the actual uh, b value, sorry, I, I messed that up. I was putting my b's and d's together. Let me fix that. So my b value was 2 times 90 times 0. So if I notice this, there we go, then I didn't have to actually worry about b in the first place because the db dt was 0, so it was always going to kill b off, so I didn't really need to care. This equals 2 times d, so that's 2 times 30 root 13 um, times d prime. And what I want is d prime. So I'm going to put all this stuff together on the left and then move that thing over. So here I have 2 times 60 times negative 15. So that's going to be, uh, let's see, negative 30 times 60, so negative uh, 1800 plus uh, 180, I guess. Uh, no, sorry, I was doing that again. 180 times 0, right? So I don't, I don't want to write that. I mean, I could, but I'm just going to go ahead and say 0 equals uh, 60 root 13 d prime. Moving that over, I'm going to have negative 1800 over 60 root 13 equals d prime. And uh, that's going to simplify to negative 30 over root 13. And yeah, I could, uh, you know, rationalize the denominator, but there's no point, right? There's, I would only do that if, if that actually got me anywhere, and I can't simplify it nicer than that as a result, because 13 is prime, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Now, it's important to interpret this correctly, right? The change in distance is negative 30 over root 13, uh, specifically feet per second. And what that's telling me is that this distance is shrinking by that rate. So I would write this as um, the distance is shrinking at a rate of 30 over root 13 feet per second. Now you might say, hold on, you forgot a negative. But no, because I'm saying the distance is shrinking at this positive rate, meaning that the distance is getting smaller at a positive value because it is getting smaller. I could, I could sort of alternately write this as the distance is so I could also, this is sort of the correct way of writing it, but an, a grammatically and mathematically correct way of writing it, even though it's a little weird to write it this way, is I could say the distance is changing at a rate of negative 30 over square root 13 feet per second. Because now the word changing doesn't have a, a direction associated to it. And so the negative is understood to be that it's shrinking, that distance is shrinking. So depending on the word choice you use, you need to either use a positive or negative value to reflect that you are positively shrinking, right? Which is why, what that negative means, or that the, um, change is negative, and that's how you get the understanding that it is getting smaller, okay? So, same sort of standard process, right? Draw a picture, try to relate the things you need, uh, take the derivative, then plug in any values, find values that are missing if you need them, compute, and find the thing you're after, right? So, that's that.